this edition of Tee It Up Grand Strand. I'm your host, Shan Coughlin, here with a very special guest today, Mr. Aubrey Apple from Eagle Nest. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, I tell you, this is especially exciting for me because you are on the beach, a true golf legend. Well, I'm not sure about that. Uh, this is starting my 30th year in the business or whatever, on the beach, whatever. Um, I grew up in golf. I don't mm-hmm. know if you knew of that, uh, but my dad, uh, my dad ran a club mm-hmm. in Greensboro uh, for 38 years, and then I, I got in the business that. and uh, lost the lease in '85. So I came to the beach in '86, trying to stay in the golf business, and uh, I was assistant <laughs> under Tom Haywood at Arcadian Shores, my first job down here. I, and that's where we first met because I was right. working at Kingston Plantation, still a great uh, resort facility, right, to, right near Arcadian Shores, and um, was working in the golf shop and came over to play golf and met you. And uh, of course, we always worked together, uh, booking golf packages and so forth. And then here you are now at Eagles Nest. Exactly. And we get to work together again. Exactly. Exactly. I, I love how that works. See, this is what's great about the golf business. You're never truly out of it. Right. <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate the Elliott family. I'm part-time, work three right? days a week, but it gives me something that I love interacting with the golfers. Oh, yeah. I love checking them in. I've always been a counter pro. Yes. I've always thought if, if you want to know what your customers are, you need to be on the counter and see what they're saying. You got to talk to them, right? Yeah, well, exactly. See, that's what this show is all about. We try to give the golfers out there who are listening you know some good information about the golf courses let them know why they want to play one versus another one and i tell you eagles nest has been around a long time and it has some great holes it sure does uh, it opened uh, in 1973 right gene ham was the architect mm-hmm. and as a matter of fact my first uh encounter with eagles nest i brought 20 of my members down to play in a <laughs> tournament at eagles nest um uh, and 76, 77, somewhere in there. So I brought 20 of my members down. We played Diggles Nest three days in a row in a little tournament that they had there. Wow. So it comes full circle. Yep. Yep, sure Absolutely. does. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, I noticed something new as I drove by the other day. There was a brand new sign. I think their sign had been out there forever, and I loved it. It had the, the it was known for the toughest three finishing holes exactly. and i think that was the the truth especially you know when it was you know since it was one of the first ones but they uh, they put up a new sign and that's just indicative of some of the other new stuff going on out there isn't it yes the family has uh, really taken a special interest here in the last uh, couple years and uh, have done a lot of improvements and uh, all we hear is good comments i've only been there six months but Everybody comes in, talks about how much better the course is. So, yeah, you know, that's good news. That is good news. Well, you've only been there six months, but like you said, you've been in the golf business forever, so you would right. know. Right. Um, I remember when um, we first started having uh, Eagles Nest folks come in and uh, talk with us. Uh, they had just redone, I know, a lot of the bunkers. Right. And right. people were loving that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And some of the, what are some of the other things that they've done? Um, out there to to the course i know well, they've done some general stuff but. right well they they changed the greens in i think 2008 and right. went to midi verde uh, bermuda mm-hmm. and uh so they've just expanded on that and and tried to uh push them and get those in nicer shape or oh, whatever yeah. and uh one of the things that i'm sort of excited about toward junior golf is mm-hmm. we've got the first tee that's right tees in and what that means is a uh, a couple can bring their child out and about like for example on the first hole par five about 200 yards out you'll drive down the cart path and you'll see a a little marker on the cart path and you know that the tee for the kid is out there so you it's out there it's out there in the fairway and what we try to do is position it in the best place on the in the fairway Fairway, and you know some of the holes are 210 some of them are 185 right and so they change it around and i think the uh superintendent was telling me i think the yardage on the first tee is 3700 yards for the 18 okay miles. well you know that's nice because i, I uh, frank and i take our boys out to play right. every once in a while and what we sometimes have to do especially for the younger one is they tee off with us and then we actually pick their ball up and then carry it out there right. you know because otherwise it's just too much for right, them right but to actually have the tees laid out so they can play their ball and keep their score correctly and, and really learn the game, I think is so important. Right, and, and we're coming up with a makeshift scorecard right. where it have the yardages on each hole for oh, them so good. that they'll they'll be able to know. Yeah. In my day, we called them peewee tees. Peewee tees. Yep, yep. 
<laughs> they were always <laughs> sitting out there somewhere around the 150-yard marker. And, and, uh, sure, yeah, that's sure. – uh, I, I tell you, the first tee programs have come so far. I know the first tee of Brunswick County, first tee of Horry County here have uh, a lot of participants. I tell you what, I'm I'm always amazed when I see their events, especially their fundraisers. Right. And I'm glad to see so many of the kids getting uh, learning the game because for a while it seemed like the trend was opposite of that. But right. things like giving them their actual tees, I think, will help because then they they feel like they actually have a place. Have y'all seen or had some good response to it so far? Uh, not so far, but we okay. because we've just got them out. Oh, of course, we want okay. we wanted them out for the summer. Okay. So we've just got them out and, and want people to be aware of it or whatever. Well, good. So we need to help get the word out. Exactly. That they're there. And now, are your um, rates for juniors the same as for adults this summer? No, the uh, the junior rate is always twelve dollars. Oh, nice. Uh, the okay. uh, the of course the adult rates change from time to oh, time yeah. or whatever. And right now we run different specials. They're on our uh, website. You can go to our website. That's the best see, place. Yep. Yeah. And you can make the tea time from there if you like. Absolutely. That's and so, the best. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the junior so rate's twelve dollars anytime. Anytime. So, yep. So that's morning or afternoon. Morning or afternoon. Any time. Anytime. Yep. I guess that's what any time is. <laughs> the blonde seeps in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. So how many times have you gotten to play the course since you've been there? Well, I've or, been working on my game. Okay. So I go out there in the afternoons, and I've actually played about 10 nine holes. I go out there and hit two or three balls and, mm -hmm. and, and chip around the green. I've played 10 nine holes in the last probably three weeks. Okay. And so let me ask you this. Do you have a favorite hole out there? Or one you like the best. I like to put people on the spot, Aubrey. <laughs> I think no, number one is is a great opening hole because right? it's wide open. You yeah. can hit two shots. You can get somewhere near the green. Maybe get a birdie or get a par. Number one's a good hole, but there's so many good holes. I mean, yeah. the last three holes, 16, 17, and 18, yeah, they're they demanding. Are, they are they're demanding. In, so. I tell you something that surprises people, and it still surprises me, and I know it's out there, are the Cypress Creeks. Or cypress, marshes with the cypress trees in and I just don't expect those to be there. They're so beautiful. Right, right, right. And we have we have several of those. Mm -hmm. Number four. Mm -hmm. Number four, you got those on both sides both sides of the uh, of the T and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. We've got several places like that. It gives you a nice shoot to uh, it, hit it down. Yep. Yeah. Hope you you hope you make it in between, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sometimes exactly. I can be a little wayward. I'm sure you are not though. <laughs> Oh, well, not as good as I once was, I can tell you. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, Aubrey, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing information about Eagle's Nest again with our listeners. Folks, Eagle's Nest is definitely one of those courses that you probably played back in the day. And if you haven't played it, you, it's a must go back and see because they have done a lot to the course. Um, it's always in great shape every time we go out there. And, excuse me, with the continued improvements, it's just getting better and better. Um, anything the folks have to look forward to come fall golf? Are y'all making any new changes to it? Mm. Or are you status quo right now? It's status quo right now, as far as I know. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Some of the best flowers on the beach, have to say, with that greenhouse out there. So, Aubrey, thank you again for coming in. Thank you for having us. We'll do us. this again in another month. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. This edition of Tee It Up Grand Strand has been produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for the Golf Director. Dot com. When visiting the golf director, be sure to check out our featured golf course pages, including the one for Eagle Nest, where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. If you need help with your next golf vacation, like to tweet, hashtag just call Dave and he'll find you, or give us a call at 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844-464-6531. All of our TGD programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand, so to catch up on a show you might have missed, click on the TGD Radio and TGD TV tabs in the menu at the golf director. Dot com. We're now available on over 1 billion devices through iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, and on the Myrtle Beach Golf app. So make sure to download that. This is your host, Shan Coughlin, on behalf of my very special guest, Mr. Aubrey Apple. We appreciate you tuning in. There's more TGD golf news and information coming up next, so don't go anywhere.